Hello again, my little mathematicians. Um, if you could please turn your packets to page 23. Um, we're going to get started a little on 23 and 24. As always, if you want to go ahead and try the problems, um, just pause the video, try to work them out, and then you can check yourself. I'm not going to do all of them, um, but I'm going to do a few here and there, and then I'll show the answers at the end so that you can check yourself. This is very good practice with coordinate geometry, or sometimes referred to as polygons in the coordinate plane, which basically means you plot points, and then you connect those points to make shapes or polygons. Okay, and then you're asked to find the area of them. For this very first one, this is just a basic shape um, or basic composite figure. You could do, you have this top square plus this bottom square and then that triangle plus that triangle. Okay, and you can find all the dimensions of those and add them together or instead, that is a square. So you could find the area of that square, which is, and how I said it was a square is because you see those little tick marks? That means that they all have the same measurements. So this is five, so is this. So this is a five by five. And then this bottom shape down here, what does that look like to you? If you said trapezoid, you are correct, okay? So right here, <clears throat> this measurement is five, so that's one of your bases. And then your bottom base, they gave me this was two. And notice how this has two tick marks and over here is two tick marks, which means these measurements match. So if this is two, that's two as well. And then this has one tick mark, which means it matches with all the one tick marks with a measurement of five. So that bottom is two, five, and two. So if you add all those together, well, two plus two is four and four plus five is nine, okay? This is a trapezoid, so you need base one plus base two times the height divided by two. So I also need to find the height. Well, look at the height. It has a tick mark of just one, which means it has a measurement of five for my height. Okay, you'd go ahead and plug that in and you'd get the area of your trapezoid. You would add that to the area of your parallelogram okay, our rectangle and base times height would be five times five. Go ahead and add those together. Let me know what you get. Pause the video and then work it out. Okay. Once you worked it out, you should have gotten an area of 60 meters squared. Whether you did the long way of adding all the individual shapes together, which I wouldn't recommend, but you can, okay, or if you saw that this is a rectangle or square, and then this is a trapezoid, and you added it together that way. You got 60 meters squared. Okay, now let's do some actual coordinate geometry like we promised this video was going to. Your first step is to plot the points. So you always start at your origin. The first point tells you to go right or left. If it's positive, you go right that many. If it's negative, you go left that many. The second number tells you to go up or down. If it's positive, you go up that many. If the second number is negative, you go down that many. So negative one means left one and then down one. There's my first point. My next point is negative two, so left two, and positive three means up three. My next one is positive four, so start your origin again and go one, two, three, four to the right, and then one, two, three up. And then finally, it's five negative one. So I'm gonna go from your origin, one, two, three, four, five over to the right, and then down one. You had four coordinate points, so you should have four dots. Connect those. And what does that figure look like? Not a rectangle, but a parallelogram. So my base, you can count them by moving along. And remember, you don't start counting until you actually move. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six for my base. And I can't find a diagonal distance. You can only find perpendicular, like perfectly straight ones. So this height covers a distance of one, two, three, four. So it has a height of four. So if you go area is base times height, well, six times four is 24. 
And if they don't tell you what units it is, it's in, just write the word units. And if it's perimeter, it's just units. If it's area, it's units squared. Okay. Um, this next shape, it's four dots, so it's going to make another parallelogram. Same with number four. But let's take a look at number five. It only has three coordinate points, which means it's going to make a triangle. So if I go ahead and plot those points, so start at your origin, you're going to go left two and up nothing. So it just stays there. And then left one and up one, two, three, four. And then their final point is over one, up nothing. Connect those three points and you have a triangle. Well, the formula for area of a triangle is base times height divided by two. Well, my base was one, two, three. And my height straight down from top to bottom was one, two, three, four. So height of four. Three times four is 12 and 12 divided by two is six and they didn't tell me the units so it's units squared okay if you would like to pause the video and go ahead and finish the front page page 23 now would be a good time okay. and once you did it those should have been your answers for number three you should have gotten 12 units squared and then for these ones um Number four was 20 units squared. Number five, we did together, was six units squared. Six was six units squared. And seven, you should have gotten eight units squared. Okay, you can take a look at that. Always, 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 if you get stuck, you can just pause the video and work it out, check your work. Let's go ahead and take a look at page 24. So if you turn to page 24 in your packet, okay, um, number eight is another triangle. So I'm going to have us take a look at number nine instead. Okay. Number nine, if I go ahead and graph these, that says negative three, negative two. So I'm going to go left one, two, three, and then down one, two. There's my first point. Then left four, one, two, three, four, and up one, two. This is zero, two, so go over nothing, up two. And then this one is zero, negative two, so over nothing, down two. Go ahead and connect those. And notice that this time we don't have a parallelogram because yes, these sides are parallel, but these two sides, if I were to extend, okay, they would eventually intersect down here at the bottom, okay? And so since these two sides down here are gonna intersect at the bottom, that means they're not parallel, so it's not a parallelogram. And when you have a four-sided figure that only one side of opposite sides are parallel, it's called a trapezoid. So base one plus base two times height divided by two. If I go ahead and find those measurements, Remember, you can always pause the video and try to work it out yourself first before we go through it together. Well, this base, and it's, the bases are always the ones that are parallel to each other, so it's here and here. These aren't the parallel sides, so those aren't your bases. It's one, two, three for one base, and one, two, three, four for your other base. It has a height of one, two, three, four, and you're going to divide that by 2. Well, 3 plus 4 is 7. And then you could go 7 times 4 is 28, and 28 divided by 2 is 14. Or you could have cross-canceled, reduced, and then you got 7 times 2 is 14 over 1 is 14. And again, they didn't tell me units, so we're just going to put units squared. Now, number 8 was a triangle, but 9, 10, 11, and 12, I'm going to give you a hint. When you graph them, you should get trapezoids, okay? Um, for number 14, it says find the perimeter of this shape. 
Well, the perimeter is just along the outside. So you would say P equals 10, and I actually like trace it so then I remember which ones I've done, plus this other 10, plus that four, plus that four, and also make sure you don't miss any sides, plus that six, plus that four, plus that two, plus that six, plus that two, plus that final four. Add them all together and your perimeter would be that many feet. It also asks you in part B to find the area. So I would suggest that you cut it there and there. And then you add this rectangle plus that rectangle plus that rectangle, okay? Um, I'll show the answers at the end, but for right now, we're gonna skip that. And if we look at number 15, this isn't an actual shape, it's a composite shape, even though it doesn't look like it. So if you cut it off right here, you have this rectangle of six by two, and then this top triangle. For that triangle, you know the base, the base is six, but what's the height? Well, if this whole side is five, and from here to here is two, what's this missing piece? That's my hint to you. If this is five, and from here to here is two, two plus what makes five? That would tell you the height, and then your base is the same as this. Okay? And then for number 13, it says find the area of the unshaded region. So if you find the area of the parallelogram and subtract that triangle, you will have the unshaded portion, okay? Um, Go ahead and pause the video, try to work all the problems that we skipped out. And then once you're done, here's the answer so you can check. Okay. And then I also threw a bonus one in there. Um, if you wanna pause the video and write that problem down and then try it yourself, that's fine as well. Okay. Congratulations on um, remastering, because this is a review, finding the area of composite shapes as well as polygons in the coordinate plane.